Happy Thursday, everyone. We're glad you're with us again this morning. If we were in Savannah as planned, we'd be a little bit disappointed with today's forecast of thunderstorms, which is in their extended forecast for quite some time. But we'd keep it sunny indoors with each of you. We do miss being with you. This statement from the movie Forrest Gump is sure true, especially this year. Perhaps visiting this museum to see this infamous bench was on your list of things to do while in Savannah. And we're sorry you're missing that visit. But to sweeten things up, we'll send someone from this session a box of chocolates. But I can tell you what you're going to be getting from today's session. In just a moment, Cheryl's going to share best practices in course development. And over lunch, at least lunch for us in Central Time, we'll have another open forum. You bring your questions and wish list items for Aceware, and we'll also discuss what happens to those wish list items. Anyway, how does that work, and how do we move forward with those items? Sarah will be joining us from Lewis Clark State College in Idaho this afternoon. She's developed some amazing procedures for cash box reconciliation. She'll share how she works with Aceware and with her internal colleagues on campus to develop this process. We'll close the day with our very own Jason Allen, who will be talking about AW pending records, how Aceweb payment processes work, what Aceweb pending payments are, what causes them, and how to manage them. Another very busy day. Lindsay's working hard to keep up to keep these session recordings posted to the conference site for you. We'll also, um, you'll also be able to find the recordings on our YouTube channel. We will be taking this site down, but I promise you I'm going to let you know where you'll be able to find these session videos indefinitely. So you won't be losing those sessions. Let's get started today. We have Cheryl with us. And she, we welcome her back to Aceware after a two-year leave of absence. She spent two years on a service mission in Nevada. And information about her time away is in our May newsletter. And we've had so many new registrations since Monday. If you're not getting that newsletter but you would like to, just type in newsletter in the chat box and we'll add you here. And you can catch up. We keep those archived on our website. So you can always catch up with those sessions, and those go out the 15th of each month. So Cheryl, I am going to turn controls over to you. It should be coming your way so that you can share all the course development best practices with the group. This was a session they requested, and so I know everybody's anxious to get started. Thanks, Cheryl. Hello. I hope everybody can hear me now. Uh, we're going to talk about maximizing your course reduction process today. This is our agenda for today. We're going to talk about course setup, data collection, fee setup, catalog descriptions, tracking expenses, course promotion via AceWeb, course performance and analytics, and then we'll have some time for questions. All right, we're going to get right into this today by talking about adding courses. And there are several ways you can add courses into your database. The first way is you can just add a single course record uh, by File, New Course, Module, Courses, Add Course. If you're a keyboard shortcut fan, you can use Alt plus C. Uh, one I, I sometimes see people just forgetting is there's an Add button on the course screen that if you've already got the course screen open and you just need to add a new course record, you can click that Add button and you don't have to close the screen and then go to one of the other options. The second way to get courses into the system is to clone a course. There's a button called Clone Course on that course screen on the right side, and then it will copy data from the open course record into a new record, and then what you need to do is set the dates. You put in the begin date and your day's meeting and tab out, and it will calculate the um, end date for you and create those room use records and things for you. The third way is we do have a mass clone, and it's available from Module Courses Mass Clone. This allows you to do a series of courses that um, 
you know, for all the courses for a spring semester, you choose to change like 19S to 20S, and you can choose how far ahead to, um, by weeks, how far ahead to um, adjust the begin date and things like that um, through that. And then you can also pick, it'll, you put in a query and then it'll um, give you a list of courses. And if you don't want to loan one or two of those, you just uncheck them. And then there's a fourth way, which is an import wizard. This is under the Tools Import Export Course Import Wizard. Now you can import courses from another source. So if you did a, you had a spreadsheet where you were doing your proposed courses and you're ready to go ahead and import them, you can run that Course Import Wizard and um, import all your courses from that spreadsheet into the database and stuff. Um, those are the main ways. There is one note that I want to make before we go on. Any of those underlying words that you see, they are links to the help topics. So we're going to quickly run through all this today, but you get this PowerPoint when you're done, when we're done, and you can go through and click those links. And it'll take you right out to help to give you more details on how to do each of these items that we're talking about today. Okay, so things to remember when creating, cloning, or importing courses. Each course must have a unique course code. So even if you're doing that import uh, course wizard, you want to make sure that you've given your courses a unique course code so you don't have uh, course duplicates in your data system, which then blows up the whole thing, and then you end up having to run the cleanup routines. The second thing is... When you create new courses, no matter which option you use, the ACE Web Publish property is initially set to whatever your default is listed in the course preferences. So if you have it set to do not publish, then all of your courses are going to be set to do not publish, which means they're not going to show on ACE Web until you go and run a routine to actually change that publish property. And then you can change that ACE Web Publish property and even the active status for the courses via that module, courses, mass change, update, delete, archive. That way you can create your courses, you can get them all in the system and all ready and make sure they're all, got all the data they need before you actually post them on ACE Web and, and people can start enrolling in them. Okay, next. Now we're going to talk about some data collection. So you might have got your courses added in there, but these are some things that are that you ought to be considering to be sure you're adding to your course records in the system. The first one is this catalog code. Now the catalog code associates a catalog information record with the course. And so you want to um, do that so that it, it, it very, excuse me, I'm tripping over my tongue, so that especially with AceWeb, they have the users can see uh, the description of the course. The category and the department and the subject codes are used to categorize courses. And that will be important later when we do some course analysis. The account number is used to assign an account code for income and expense purposes. The room use is to set up your course schedule and then also to customize if necessary. The course UDFs are for info, you know, specific to your institution course. There are things that maybe you don't um, have a feel for, but you need to, to track. And then you also have the option for register and register UDF fields for info specific to students. Now, this is handy for your camps and conferences, um, for things where you're needing to get additional information on the students other than just, you know, them registering and getting fees and things, which is the normal thing you would see online. And then the newer option is those unlimited UDFs for all of your extra field needs. We have a limited number of UDFs available when you go to the additional info tab, but you can now create additional ones for as many as you needed for, for um, registrations. Okay, now this is just the course screen, and I've highlighted some of those um, records. Let me get my arrow. There's the catalog code. 
where you would choose to put a catalog code. And this course, this Mastering Student Manager, I actually have a catalog record that's uh, coded ACE 010, which has a description on what this mm -hmm. course is about. Some of those category ones are the category, and then the department, and then the subject code, and then here's the account code. And then if you want to look at the room use or customize it, there's the room use button and stuff. Turn that off. There we go. Okay, now, if you don't see one of these fields on your own course screen, these are these can be enabled and disabled on course preferences. You just pull up course preferences and you can turn on or off which ones. So just note that, I mean, these are all available, but if they don't see one, you go to course preferences and turn it on. Okay, now, subject code notes. The course subject codes and the names interest codes, those are the same list. Because subject codes are assigned to courses, and then when a student registers in that course, that subject code is added to their student's interest, interest areas list so that, you, for marketing purposes, you can pull a list of those people that have that subject code and send them a list of upcoming courses or send them special flyers or anything like that. And that was, that's a, it's a marketing it was specifically set up for marketing purposes, so you had a list of those people. The subject interest codes also can be hidden, so you can create interior internal codes if you needed to, and then hide them from the interest areas list on AceWeb, so your AceWeb people can't pick one when they're when they're choosing what things they're interested in and stuff. Okay, now course schedule. When you enter the schedule details, you put in the begin date, the day's meeting, the start end time, the system creates a course time string. But now you can edit that if you want to. There are some course preferences that affect it, which are the lock time. So if you say you, you needed to make a small change for one course, if you have that lock time option checked, then it won't let anybody, once you save the course and that time change, it won't let anybody else change it. Like if you have to rebuild your room use for some reason, it doesn't it doesn't change that course time because you customized it. You also have the option to just use time only. So if you don't want to show the days and time, you uh, enable that option, and then it'll just have it'll just always put course time only in that course time field. And then another option for the time is you can have it um, abbreviate it. So we'd get 8 a.m. instead of 8 colon 00, or 00 a.m. Now, there's another option called a course time pattern that customizes how that course time string is actually built. And so if you're interested in that, I would suggest it can be a little bit tricky to build that string. So you might contact your ASOR technician for that. Oops, sorry. Um, to talk to them about building a string, but that allows you to actually, and then that'll be that'll what it's what'll be used on every course. It'll um, whatever course time pattern and things. And then room use. So once you you get your uh, begin dates, days meeting, and things in it in the room, you can click that room use button. And then see, and you can see over here where I've got the edit room use screen, you can actually see all the session records that it created. And so if you need to adjust uh, the schedule, you can come in here and this is how you do it. You can roll a session date to a new date. Now this would be the instructor isn't available on a specific, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, but he's not available on one Tuesday. You can roll that date down to the next available date with that roll date button. You can delete a session if he's not going to, he's gone, but he's not going to make that day up. So you're just going to delete that session out of the system. And then by default, the system will skip any days entered in your holiday schedule. That's through module holidays. So if normally the course meets, it's a fall course, it normally meets on Thursdays, but you need it to skip Thanksgiving Thursday you enter th Thanksgiving in there in your holiday schedule, and then when it builds that room use list, it'll skip that day. Now, the 
about that to remember, though, is that your holidays have got to be entered before you create your course records. If you don't um, have them entered when it starts building that room use list, it won't it won't have anything to skip. So just be sure that you do the holidays before you start putting in the courses for your next term stuff. Now, getting session details to your students. There are options for you getting them. There is a function called date list that you can put on your receipts, your printed receipts or your emailed receipts, that will actually build a list of the session details that can be included in there. Um, this would be especially useful if you have to customize that room use. There's an ACE web version of date list that you can also use on confirmations emailed from ACE web so that both whether they enroll by calling in or they enroll on ACE web, they'll either one they'll get that list of uh session the session details. And then if you've got a relatively newer course status page, then that's the course that's the template that shows the individual course information. You'll see a little tabbed screen like this and you'll actually see a sessions tab that the user can look on click on <laughs> look on click on and um see the session details from there before they even enroll to make sure they're going to be available to on the days that it's meeting. So. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is course UDFs. Now, when you go to the additional info tab on the course, you're going to see two sections. That top section that's labeled user-defined information, that's course UDFs for collecting additional data about your course. So um, you can see in our example, we have a, a when a budget's due. So you've created budget, but you've got to log when it's time to get that budget out to your uh, financial people. Or you've got a specific amount of overhead that has to be applied to this course only and things like that, a faculty rep, a sponsor. Those are our examples. But now. These are for the course only. Some people get a little confused about that and think that they're for um, registrations, and they're not. These are only to collect extra data on the course record. Now, that second section that's labeled user-defined labels for this course, now that's so that you can use specific labels for this course only. Now, I'm going to go to the next one here and give you an example. Um, these are my register UDF fields set up. And you can see my default use UDF labels are spouse, instrument, and doctor. So normally when you go to the green screen, you're enrolling someone, and you go to that additional info tab to put some extra data in, that's the, that's the labels you're going to see on those character fields. But if I go back, let me go back one. If I enter the labels here, and you see I put hotel arrival departure on this one course. So when I go to the additional info tab on this course to enroll somebody, instead of seeing spouse in sprint doctor, I'm going to see hotel arrival departure. So that's a way to use custom UDF labels for this course only on that green additional info screen. Now, we're going to talk just a second about unlimited UDFs. You can set up unlimited UDFs if you need them. So say there are four additional info uh, fields available for course and register, but you find that you need six. Well, you can use the, the original four, and then you can set up two more in the additional UDFs, and then you can click that additional UDFs button on the course record or even on the, it'll be names and register that allow you to do that too. And then you can add the additional information. In this example, I set up, yes, this class, you must have a parking pass, and that's the parking lot you must park in. And so that can be used later when it's time to either send off a list to people who build to create your parking passes, or if you're creating them yourself, you can uh, use this data in a report to create those parking passes for these people that are registered in this course. Then you can do the same thing on uh, the green screen, the registration screen, with that additional info. For this one, I created an extra one called Dance Partner. So you click that additional info, 
and then um, you, that comes up, and now you can add in who what their who their dance partner is going to be if you needed to come in and make a label for both people and things. They only pay for one registration, but you still need that dance partner name. And then also be sure to note these can also be used in your Ace Web Supplemental Data Capture page. So you can get when they enroll online, you can also have dance partner pop up on the um, page where they're picking their fees and adding all their extra information. The dance partner could be there as well, so they can fill that out before they can go on. And things like that can be made uh, required on Ace Web so that you, they can't skip it until they actually put in a dance partner. So they make sure that they get you get that info added into the system. Okay, so now we're going to move on to fee setup. We have many options for fees. The first one is this is your main fee rate. This is the one where they this is what they're going to the main rate they're going to pay to um take the course. And you can have a register reg, regular registration rate, but then you can also set up rates for special groups like staff, alumni, um, you can set up group rates where they know they're going to enroll three people, and so you, they get a, a special rate if you're enrolling three or more. Um, that's one. And we also have early bird rates. Now, these are rates that are registered. You have your regular rate, but then you also have the early bird rate, and they can receive that rate before a certain date. So if they enroll 30 days before the course starts, they're going to get a rate that's $20 cheaper than if they waited until less than 30 days, and then they're going to get whatever the rate is. And both Student Manager and ASWEB, on the day that that rate is supposed to expire, it'll it'll expire it and move it down the list so that they don't normally, you know, ASWEB or Student Manager, they don't normally get that rate anymore. I mean, in Student Manager, you can still give it to them as, for special cases by choosing it from the fee rate. But on Ace Web, they just don't get it anymore. Then there also is an option for memberships. You can set up memberships, and you can give members a special rate. Um, they have to enroll in the membership course and be designated as a member, and then you have a membership rate on the course that you can get. Um, give them, <laughs> excuse me, when they enroll in the course. These are all three main fee rates not optional fees. These are all the main fee rate options. Now, the new a new feature that was just added was that set fee limits. And you can set the maximum number of registrants who receive that main fee. So, I, not only do I have early bird fees, but I only want to give 10 people that early bird fee rate. So I set the max at 10, and then both in Student Manager and ASWEB, they won't let after you've reached ten people who've been given that rate. They don't. They don't get it anymore. It's not available anymore for it to be assigned. And you can do that for staff and alumni and memberships. Everything allow only so many people to get those rates in a particular class. Now, a new another new feature that they've added is this early bird optional fees. It used to be you just had one rate for optional fees. So if I wanted a book. I just paid one rate. They just always had one rate. But now you can offer an early bird optional fee. So if I enroll 30 days before the course starts, not only do I get $10 off the main rate, I can get $5 off the book that I need. Thanks. Now, this is an op this is an uh, optional module. They're called it's for um the course packaging is for ASWEB and Student Manager. What it does is it lets you set up a package. So I have a management package, and I've got three courses in my management package. And if they took them singly, they might be $225. But if they took the package, then I've given them $50 off on the course, so they can only pay $175 for each course. And then the other one is the buy one, get one free package that works in ASWEB that allows you to offer things like buy one course, get one free, buy two courses, get the third half off. You can set up what kind of a BOGO you want. As an example, we have this out on our website, the project management cap package. 
that if they bought the package, they pay five twenty five, which is one hundred and seventy five for each course. And like I said, that's you can see in the description. It's you save one hundred and fifty over the individual course rates. Then the other one, this is a sample of BOGO, where we just have a enrolling one course from our special offer group and get the next one for free. And so you, um, I don't remember what course, I think this was a knitting course. You buy the knitting course and then you could buy a crochet course and you don't pay for the crochet course. Now this is a, an optional module, like I said, there's a price scheme for it and set up things that you need to do. So if you're interested in that, be sure and call your ASWR technician and they can get you pricing and and set up and, and help you get the packages and things set up for yourself. Okay. Oh, that's out of order. Sorry, I'll come back to that one. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk to is catalog descriptions. Now, we talked about putting that catalog code. Now we're going to talk about having an actual catalog record that you can export for catalog generation and it can be viewed on AceWeb when the users are um, looking to see if they're interested in this course. It also has things like benefits, features, materials that can be added to those catalog records and they can also be shown on AceWeb. Uh, an example is uh, materials needed. You can put the materials list in that materials field and then you can show that on AceWeb and or it could even be included in registration confirmation so they make sure that they have the supplies they need uh, before they start the class. You set up prerequisites uh, for a course. That would be if I want to take intermediate management, I have to have taken inter introductory management first. And so I can set a prerequisite on my intermediate management course that it, it'll check both student manager and AceWeb will check to make sure I, I've had that course before they let me enroll in the intermediate course. And the other option is related courses. Now these are, this is a marketing thing again that lets you set up courses that um, are related to whichever course they're on. For instance, we go back to uh, introduction to management. I can set intermediate management. I can set management in, uh, information concepts, I can set uh, industrial management, all of those as related courses. And there's a way from the register screen, there's a button, and also in AceWeb, they'll show those courses so that you can try to get people to take things that, you know, take more courses related and they can take things that are um, they're interested in. And we'll look at that in a little bit on AceWeb when we get to that point. Okay, this is the catalog screen. And you can see I have a primary description. I have the benefits materials tab, um, the prerequisites where you set up prerequisites and the related courses there. The secondary description is the one that shows on AceWeb. That's because uh, this is a pretty simple, just one paragraph um, catalog description. But if you had ones that were more paragraphs and things, if you don't use the HTML, for your web description, then it just shows as one big blob of text. So that's why there's two primary descriptions to be read in, in the student manager, but it's also for exporting. The secondary one is so you can use HTML to format it for, for display on the web. Now for exporting, you're going to go to Reports, Courses, Generally, Catalog Copy. You're going to choose that Export to File option. And then you're going to choose what fields you want to export. And then you choose um, the export type stuff. The one thing to remember about the export, because the descriptions, all that text, it's saved in what uh, Foxboro calls a memo field. And the memo fields, you can only export them in two types. You can do the DBF or you can do it in the Microsoft Excel XLSX. And you can see in red, it'll remind you of that over there on that export data selector screen. Those are the only two options you can use if you want that data to be exported. Now, if you don't know the field names, you can go to Online Help. There's a link to it right there. You pick uh, from the All Topics, you pick Screen Layout, and then you see the screens and in this case, we're looking at Catalog Builder, so I picked Catalog Builder. 
all you have to do is hover over that screen, that uh, field, and you can see. Right there, when I hover over it, it brings up that field name. So I know that when I go to export, the CADESC is the one I want to export. If I click the field, then it brings up more information and tells me how long the field is, what type it is, and things like that. Um, so there are ways. There's also a way um, with, uh, if you go to, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. There it is. You can also go to uh, all topics, student manager topics, reporting, and then data tables and fields, and you can actually get a list of the all the tables with all the field names. Um, and now that list is sorted by uh, the label you see on the screen. So you can easily find the label and you can find out what the name of the field is and the um, uh, more information about what type it is and things like that if you're doing special exporting needs and things like that. And that can actually be printed out if you wanted so that you always had it if you don't like going to the help and looking at the screen stuff. Okay, so now online course descriptions. Uh, we talked about they needed to be formatted using HTML to display online. There is that tool. I'm going to go back just to here. If you see that tool right here, the Generate HTML, you click that button, and it'll bring up the screen, the HTML editor. And then you can create, actually you highlight whatever you want. Like I could highlight the word Aceware and click the bold button and it'll bold it. I can make different paragraphs. I can um, put make a list and things like that and stuff. And then it'll, once it gets done, once you click the done button, then it'll store that HTML formatted in that secondary web. Okay, now let's talk about tracking expenses. There are two things to help you with your expenses in uh, a, or a student manager. The first one is the budget. So you click on the budget button on the course record and you access the budget builder. And this allows you to create a budget. You can put in fees, how many you think you're going to have at each fee. For example, I have, I think I'm going to get 10 people at the registration fee and I'm going to have two staff that take this course. And then you can add your per person expenses. Um, this is a two day course. We're going to offer them lunch, breaks, and then we're going to have supplies. So that's $95 per person that I think this course is going to cost me and things. Um, you can do expense estimations, which are just entering. Um, I know I'm going to have a brochure, and I'm going to have to put training manuals, and I'm going to have to mail the brochures and things like that. And then once you get all that data in there, at the bottom you'll see the uh, results. It'll give you an idea of the estimated enrolled. If you, if this is a course where you've actually, in this particular one, I've actually got nine people enrolled. It'll give me my expense costs, uh, sunk costs, which are things like brochures and training manuals that I have to print, and then my program costs, which would be you know paying for lunch, breaks, that kind of thing. It'll give me the base fee, the per person charges, the net of what I'm, uh, my registration fee and any overhead I have, and then it's going to give me a profit loss. And then on the right there, you can see go, no, go numbers. It, at this point in time, with all my expenses and everything, it thinks I need at least 4.3 people to enroll, and if I want to break even, I need 7.4, well, basically 8 people to enroll and 5 people to for no go. The other thing that's kind of nice about the budget is you have this what if actuals tab. This allows you to play with your numbers on your uh, fee rates. So if I decide I want, if I'm, like on this one, I added an early bird fee. Well, I got two people at it, eight people, and then I only have one staff. And it gives you an idea of numbers so you can try to figure out profit loss, calculated fees, see if I can 
maybe if I lower this to 325, can I still make my budget and still, you know, make my expenses on this course and things like this? This isn't saved. It's just a way for you to see if you can change your fee rate, fee schedules and things to still make a profit and but try to make it more uh, attractive to your students to get your people in the seats. The next option, now this is actually, Pocket Ledger actually tracks expenses. This is your, your actual expenses. Budget is proposed. These are actual. And you can see that I have one in here on this example where I printed the brochures. I printed them at Kinko's. They cost me $492. Um, and you can put these in there. You can have um, these and then when you go to, when we get into the reporting part, you'll see that we can, um, Keep see how much we actually spent and how much profit we made, kind of that kind of thing in here. Okay, we've just basically covered these, the budgeting and tracking, but we do have webinars that give you more, a lot more information about these. So if you go to the webinar archive page, the financial staff tab, there's one called Using Budget Builder and Pocket Ledger, Avoid the Financial Frenzy. And then Tuesday, uh, Brittany Thomason actually um, did a session on using Pocket Ledger at Auburn University. So you can go back to that 2020 virtual conference and see that. Now, Sharon mentioned they're going to change that a little bit. So when we get, when I get the new thing, I'm going to make this available, this PowerPoint available online. So when I get the new um URL, I will put it there so that you can find those too. So be sure, and after this, after the conference is over next week, that you come back and look at that so that you can get a copy of this if you want. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is promoting our courses. Um, you've got um, several ACEWeb options that you can do this. I don't know how many of you actually have ACEWeb. Hopefully, quite a few of you do. But we have unscheduled courses, related courses, upcoming courses, and a tell a friend about this course. So we'll talk about unscheduled courses first. If you set up the unscheduled courses option, when they go and look, and in this one, in this example, I picked art and music, you'll see this additional tab that says not currently scheduled. If your user clicks on that, then they're going to get a list of classes. In this case, I have Joy of Painting Landscapes. I don't have a class offered this semester for Joy of Painting Landscapes. I mean, we do offer it. It's just I don't have a current one. They can click that Joy of Painting Landscape link, and then they get this page where they can actually put their email address in and name and submit requests. Now that will do two things. Number one, it add, makes sure that they have the Joy of Painting Landscape subject code added to their interest areas. If it's if it's already there, it just does an update of the date. But if it's not there, it'll add it. And then it sends an email to the staff member to let them know that somebody's interested in that. So you, you can keep track of how many people are interested so you know that you want to be sure and get that on your list of courses for the next term. And that just tells you the same thing. Okay. Now, related courses. You know, we sure. set up related sure. courses on sure. our catalog. Sure. Sure. Time yeah? out. Time out. Can you hear me now? You hear me now? Hey, uh, you, you're yeah. doing well. Don't have a lot of questions yet. I wonder if I could uh, get a quick poll of your attendees. Go back a slide, if you can go back. Go back forward. a slide? That one? Yeah, on the unscheduled courses. Um, uh, would you raise your hand if you are using the unscheduled course feature in AceWeb? Raise your hand if you're doing that. So uh, I'm just kind of curious on that because I think that's an unused, that is a feature that is, we only have like three or four folks using that. So anyway, for the rest of you that have not uh, used or implemented that, take a look at that on your uh, on the health guide <clears throat> and feel free to check with your tech on that. So um, yeah, I wanted to... That's a good marketing thing. I mean, people are looking for something, and you don't have it in the currently scheduled, but you do offer it. You don't want to lose them just because you don't have a current class on it. You want to make sure that that you can 
they can see it, that they do offer it. You just don't have a current one. But, hey, let me know you're interested, and I'll make sure we get that on the list and get you a, a, get a class. And I can even email you later and say, hey, we've got a class offered now. So, okay, Very we're going to move All on right. now. Well, I'll let you go on. Thanks. Okay. The next one is that related courses. I talked about um, this is intro to management, and I have got two classes identified as related courses on my catalog record. And if you see down here, there is links to those. Now, what if when I click those links, it'll come up with a similar page to this intro to management with the description and things like that, so that they can possibly in, um, take it if I've got a current currently uh, scheduled course, they can go ahead and enroll in that too. If not, it'll take them back to that not currently scheduled um, the, the page where I can say, okay, I'm interested in this, you know, I want to take this class. That's just another way to try to get more interest in your classes so that you can um, get more, <laughs> as Chuck would say, get more butts in the seat. Okay, now, this is another option. This is the My Account page. And so I log in, I go to My Account. I can put a list of upcoming courses on their My Account page. So they have these options to go to profiles, interests, history, and things like that. But they also have a list right in front of them. Now that list is taken from their interest codes. So on this person's list, they have an interest in ACEWARE, in management, and in yoga. It's going to pull up a list of classes that are available, so maybe they'll click those and go ahead and enroll in a class. That same function can be used in an email um, for student manager email template. There, there's actually one, I think it's called Market AW email template that's available. So you send it off to them, and they'll get an email like this, and it'll actually have the date it starts and a course that's a link that if they click that link, it takes them out to the ACE web page so they can actually enroll in um, those courses. And this, again, this is the same thing that they get that list from the person's interest code records. Stop. Now, the last course promotion thing is that tell a friend about this course. You can see if you click that little orange email link, it brings up this tell a friend about this course page. So I want to take this yoga course, and I want to take it with my friend. I can actually just put my friend's email in there, maybe add a note, and then send the email, and then they're going to, at the bottom part where it says email message text, they're going to get an email that just looks like that with the, the description, and it's going to have a link in there, and it's got a phone number or an email if they the friend has questions so that maybe they can get another person into involved in that course. Okay, now we're going to go into our course performance. Now this is where we're going to see some of that data collection, especially the categories, uh, categorization to help us with our reports. And the first one we're going to look at is that F9 dashboard report. If you press F9 key, it opens the dashboard. It's there on the right. You can see it. This is a quick and dirty way to get some numbers. Um, I did it for this quarter, and you can see, of course, this is demo data, so it's not real useful, but you can see I'm going to get how many enrollments, my income, how many enrollments were on the web, and then versus how many enrollments and income I had from last year. So I can see in this example I have, uh, what, gosh, I can't tech, 21? Yeah, 21 more people I have enrolled at this time last year than I had um, this year than I had last year, and then I made, what, 700 more this year than I have last year. Um, and this is for my ACEWAR systems. You can see I picked department, and so I'm scoping this list by department. So I can see for ACEWAR systems department, that's what I made. I could pick other departments. I could pick one of those subject codes, account, coordinator. I can even do a user defined if I'm using something else, even a, a UDF if I wanted to, that I needed to get this information for. Now, this isn't saved anywhere. It's just for you. You Somebody calls, your director calls, and you need to give him a quick amount of, of uh, quick numbers real fast. You can pull this up and do this. 
stuff. Cheryl, uh, yes. uh, show of hands. <clears throat> All right, folks. How many of you have done an F9 in the past month? Uh, raise your hand if you've used the F9 key in the past month. All right, seeing hands go up, up, up more. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to move uh, on because I'm out of time. All right, go for it. All right, uh, I, we okay. have about eight or nine of the group. All right. This is a course data summary. It's um, report statistics course course data summary. I selected departments for this location. This is to give you, so here's all my departments I have set up, how many classes I have per department, and then a percentage of the total at 88 total. So you can see how many classes I had and the percentage of the total at 88. If I had any canceled, if I had registrations canceled, um, enrollments per class, class fees, gross income, income and expenses, and my net income and stuff. And this can be printed and sent off to anybody. I also have an option to do performance review. Now this I picked, um, I selected enrollment for this example, So, and I selected the top 10. So it gives me the top 10 courses I had as far as enrollments, and I've got like the first top one I had 10 down to three. Of course, this is demo data. Your data is going to look better than mine. But um, then you can see your top 10 performers. I can also set it. I could have put the top 20 performers if I wanted. And I ran it for this semester. So you can run it for the semester. That's in a query. And then select enrollments and things to give you some idea of your courses that are doing the best. We also have budget reports. I On the left, I have a, just a basic default budget report, and you can just see it's got all the data in there for my budget, um, what I put in for fees, what I put in for per-person charges, what I put in for sunk and program costs, and then it, it's just a printed, gives me those same numbers and the results so I can kind of get an idea of in my enroll, uh, sunk cost, program cost, go break, go no go and break even numbers. This is kind of meant that you need you you're putting it in and your director needs to see what the budgets are or your financial people so you can approve the courses. And then once the course is done, you can come over and run this is a the next one over here on the right is an additional report that's budgeted versus actual. Now if you're putting your budget in and then you're also entering your expenses in pocket ledger, you can actually do a a, a report that shows you what you thought you were going to spend what you, over what you actually spent. And then that's to help you, you know, for next term, then you can know you're going to need to budget a little bit more for this or maybe a little less for that. And those are both budget reports in that po reports pocket ledger budget report. And there are other budget reports in there too. I just chose these as two examples. And then we have pocket ledger reports. The one on the left, I ran for a uh, a semester, but uh, it will do a um, um, single course. This just gives me everything, expenses. It gives me how much I made in registrations, how much I made in other fees, um, how much my expenses were, and then a breakdown of how much I've received versus how much is outstanding, and then gives me a total of what it thinks I made for that particular course. The one on the right is an example of an expense listing that's by class by a grouping. In this case, I chose um, expense class grouping. It lets me pick um, across the board what court, what expenses I had, and it'll give me a list like how much I spent on supplies, how much I spent for advertising, how much I spent on personnel um, instructors, and I mean for this. Sample report, I mean, it's only showing one class, but this would be one you would see several classes and it would give you a total maybe for the semester of everything you spent on supplies so that you can kind of get an idea of what you're spending for your courses and things. Okay. Resources. Now, we've talked about this. When we're done, download this PowerPoint and you can get in here and click all those links to pull up the individual things if you're more interested about using that type of option for your school. Um, and all of those come from, well, 
online help, the webinar archive, or this 2020 virtual conference sessions, which, like I said, if you'll get a copy of this next week, I'll have that updated with the new link from Sharon's that she talked about at the first and things. Um, the third one is don't forget about your ACEWARE technician. I mean, you email him or her. Ask them about these features. They are happy to help you. Um, give you an ideas if you know. Give you if there's an extra cost. Give you an ideas on the best ways to use them. They can even look at your current ACE website and say, okay, yeah, you know, you're already using this, but you're not using this. Let's help you get that set up. And then the last one is private training. We do do training where we come to your unit. Uh, I wrote this down for Chuck. We train your unit in all the ways of the ACEWARE. Um, so. Um, we can come, if you're interested in that, send an email to info at ASWARE and for options and for pricing and things. Okay, I'm ready for questions. Lots of ground to cover. Excellent job. Several shout-outs, Cheryl. Welcoming back. So they're glad to have you back. Um, Thanks. Uh, a couple of questions. One, um, uh, Tammy wants to know how. what do you have to do in order to implement the show unscheduled courses. Can you do a quick overview of that? I said call your tech, but can you give a quick overview of what you, they you, need to do on that one? There are two big things that you do. You have to make sure all your catalog records have uh, that subject code and it wants, you need to match your courses. You want to use the same uh, course subject code on the um, – There, that subject code, you want to make sure that that's available. The other thing is this grouping. You're going to set up the same groups, um, grouping codes that you set up on um, your courses. You're going to want to set up the same, add the same grouping codes to this to all your catalog records. So whatever I've got on Mastering Student Manager as far as grouping codes go, I want to set up the same grouping codes on this catalog record because what it does is is it looks at um, catalog records when it builds that unscheduled or not currently scheduled tab. It's going to go out and look at your catalog records and it's going to see, okay, I don't, maybe all my Mastering Student Manager courses are done for the term. So it's going to put that one in the not the mastering student manager list, uh, the not currently scheduled list, so I can say, okay, I offer one on mastering student manager. I just don't have one scheduled right now. So, but those are the two big things that you need to do is make sure that you've got your grouping, make sure you've got your scheduling subject code. Um, and I should say the third thing is to make sure that publish on web is checked because it will not – you can have internal – description catalog records that you don't want to show on ACE Web. So that make sure that one is checked or unchecked, depending. Uh, and again, go to the online help. I think you've got a link to it from Yes, I slide. do. It's in there so they uh, can find that. Get to that. All right. Jill has a question, and I, this is an interesting one. If a student fills out the Telefriend page, if you want to jump to that Telefriend, uh, is there a way to give that student a discount uh, you know, the $5 f uh, discount for referring a friend. Not at the present time, but that would be a really good wish list item. Well, the question is, Cheryl, is there a way on the refer a friend that you can blind carbon copy that to the ACE Web, um, you know, contact person that you have in ACE Web I and I? It goes, it, I think it already goes, they already send a copy that, I don't think it sends an exact copy of this email. But it sends. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong tab. It sends. Um, I mean, some kind of an email link that says, "Okay, this person oh, sent one the tell friend about this course." It always sends it to that staff member that's listed in the office staff email. Okay. So, um, so Jill and anybody else, uh, if you enable this, you will be able to get notification. And again, I. I'll I'll do a test of that and let you know, but I'm pretty sure then it probably would show who the staff who the student was that sent the email, so that um, you should be able to there'd be a little bit of manual work involved, but should be able to track them down and offer a um, whatever benefit that you might want to yeah five dollar coupon or so, something yeah yeah. And with the new escrow option now, the apply escrow online, you could actually 
post a five dollar escrow entry to that person's account so that when they register the next time it'll actually be showing as a discount uh they can apply to the next course so anyway. that's true you can yeah. do that yeah. cheryl what or sharon any uh questions you've got or um things that we want to cover otherwise, cover, cheryl, otherwise cheryl, you've covered quite everything there I don't have any extra questions that I see. I did make a few notes to all of you during her session. And her PowerPoint that she mentions, the live links, those are up on the website on her session. So you can see that. And I have no intentions of like pulling that website down even this month. But we'll be sure you know where we collect all of the conference sessions so that you can always have access to these. You should be seeing my screen now so that you know what's coming up next. Um, at noon, you're going to have these four gentlemen that you can ask your questions and make your wish list, and we'll talk about how that item on the wish list can get into production. We'll tell you about that process. And I don't want to make the big mistake I made yesterday and forget to announce who won the box of chocolates, and that is a shout-out to Lansing Community College in Michigan. Glennis, you'll be getting an email from Susan, and she'll send you some Russell Stover's chocolates, which I believe were the types of chocolates that were in the movie, too. So anything else, Chuck, before we let folks take a quick break before coming back and joining us at noon our time? Nope, nope. nope other nope. than Cheryl, good job. Glad to have Glad you back. You. And again, uh, never mind the ugly-looking faces on that open forum. We'll try to answer your questions in about 30 minutes. So sure. come back and join <laughs> us in 30. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Cheryl. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.